So let's continue our discussion on electron geometry and molecular geometry. So recall that when a central atom A has five electron groups around it, that results in a trigonal bipyramidal shape, as shown here. If none of these electron groups are lone pairs, in other words, if all of these lines here represent a bond between two atoms, then the molecular geometry is going to be identical to the electron geometry, which is trigonal bipyramidal. But what if we have one lone pair? In this case, it's actually interesting because the lone pair could either occupy an axial position or it could occupy an equatorial position. So which does it occupy, the axial, the axial position or the equatorial position? It turns out that the lone pairs are actually going to occupy the equatorial positions. And the reason why is because the repulsions between lone pairs and bonding pairs are actually uh, greater than the repulsions between uh, just bonding pairs. So because the angles between these equatorial positions are 120 degrees and the angle between an axial and an equatorial uh, position is 90 degrees, putting the lone pair in the equatorial position minimizes the repulsion between these bonding pairs and this lone pair. If we were to put it up here in the axial position, we'd have three of these 90 degree repulsions. But when we put it here in the equatorial position, we only have two of these 90 degree unfavorable uh, repulsions. So the lone pair is going to go here in the, equal, in the uh, equatorial spot, either here, here, or here. This molecular geometry is what we call seesaw. Five electron groups, one lone pair. If we have two lone pairs, well, the second lone pair is also going to occupy an equatorial uh, position for the same reason that the first one did. So I'm going to put them here and here. It might be an easier way of looking at it. This shape is what we call T-shaped. Five electron groups, two of them are lone pairs. If there's a third, if there's a third lone pair, which is the case uh, with a few molecules, that third lone pair is also going to occupy this third equatorial position, giving rise to a shape that's, that should be familiar, and it goes back to linear. All right, so that does it for all of the molecular geometries associated with five electron groups. Now let's look at the six electron group scenario. Okay, so in one of my previous videos, uh, I discussed that if we have six electron groups around an atom, then that is going to yield an octahedral geometry. And you guessed it, if, all, if none of these electron groups are lone pairs, then the molecular geometry will also be octahedral. But if we have one lone pair, that's going to give rise to a different shape altogether. It doesn't really matter where I put the lone pair in this case because all of these positions, uh, although it may not look like it from this point of view, but all eight of these, or excuse me, all six of these positions are equivalent. So I could put the lone pair here or here or wherever, and it'll all give rise to the same shape. So I'll just put it down here. And this shape is what we call square pyramidal.
And the shape has a four-sided, uh, it, it's basically a four-sided pyramid, and the face of it is a square. If we have two lone pairs and an octahedral electron geometry, that second lone pair is actually going to go on opposite to where the first one did. And this is just also another way to relieve the lone pair bonding pair repulsions or any possible lone pair lone pair repulsions which would be even worse. This shape in which we have six electron groups and two lone pairs is called square planar. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, scenarios in which there are three and four lone pairs, uh, I don't think there are any of those that are known to man, but um, they nevertheless, they might be out there. So you could probably, uh, at this point, predict what those shapes would be. So I'll leave that to you, and I hope this video has helped out.